Hey guys, welcome to a brand new series of video tutorials. This time it's all about Starling. Starting with Starling, meaning right from the beginning. This series expects you to know Flash Action Script 3 programming to an intermediate level and starts off from basics of Starling framework. We shall understand the process of designing and developing a game right from scratch and hopefully also run the final game on a couple of devices. I am Hemant Sharma and join me today to learn to build wonderful games using Adobe Flash platform. In this course, we are going to explore setting up Starling displaying images and textures, understanding events and touch events, creating scenes and navigating between them using buttons, understanding bitmap and embedded fonts, simple tweening of objects, understanding and creating keyframe animations and sprite sheets, compiling for devices, phones and tablets, particles, physics and some of the tips for writing multi-platform code. Let's get started. So what is Starling? Starling is a framework, it is written in ActionScript 3 and it is used to build 2D games. It is also built on top of Stage 3D. Now Stage 3D, the one that was also called as Mole Hill, is a brand new feature of Flash Player 11. With the new ActionScript APIs it provides, developers can now leverage the power of GPU hardware or the graphics processing unit. This means with Stage 3D, you can now take full advantage of the hardware accelerated capabilities of the user's computer GPU directly from within Flash. Cool. Now coming back to Starling. Since it is built on top of Stage 3D, all your 2D games can now take advantage of the GPU and the hardware acceleration. This means faster rendering, greater performance and awesome games. Now, how does Starling differ from the usual ActionScript 3 APIs? Starling is a port of Sparrow framework for iOS. So, Starling behaves similar to Sparrow, but the good thing is, the APIs are very very similar to the usual ActionScript 3 APIs that you are already used to. So, for a start, flash.events.eventdispatcher becomes starling.events.eventdispatcher, flash.events.event becomes starling.events.event, flash.display.displayObject becomes starling.display.displayObject and the same holds good for flash.display.sprite and stage and more. Also, the Starling display objects have some of the similar methods you have in Flash display objects such as add child, add child at, remove child, remove child at, add event listener and more. Starling event has the very similar properties added to stage enter frame, etc. Having Starling built this way makes it extremely easy for us regular Flash developers to start building stuff. However, there are some changes to some of the APIs and the process of using them. That's exactly what we are going to explore in this series. To give you a head start on what major changes to look for, here are a couple. Movie clips are not built or used the same way. They don't directly come from the timelines, but they do from sprite sheets. I'll explain a little more about sprite sheets as we progress. There are no mouse events. Sparrow was built for iOS. Since Starling is an ActionScript port, it only has touch events. But don't worry, it works like a charm on Flash Player on the desktop web. With the ability to track touch face, you can easily mimic mouse down, mouse up, mouse move, drag, etc. We shall cover all of them in the coming episodes. I think we can now start setting up the development environment to start building our project. First, let's look at the components we need. Adobe Flash Builder 4.6 is what I use to write the code. So visit adobe.com and download and install the latest trial version if you don't have. Next, you need the new Flash player for testing and running the project. So visit labs.adobe.com and download the content debugger for your specific platform. Once you have it downloaded, install the same. Also from the same page, download the Flash Player 11.2 release candidate Global SWIC. This is required to tell your Flash Builder what the new APIs are so it can compile them for you. We shall start to set this up with Flash Builder in a minute. We shall also publish device version of our project later. So we'll need Air 3.2 SDK downloaded. So from labs.adobe.com, 
download the Air 3.2 SDK for Windows or Mac. We shall set it up a little later. Now that we have Flash Builder 4.6 and Flash Player 11.2 Content Debugger installed, we shall set up the global SWIC. First thing is to rename the SWIC file to playerglobal.swic. I shall copy it to the libs folder in Flash Builder application folder. So navigate to Flash Builder application folder, SDKs, 4.6.0, Frameworks, Libs, Player, 11.1 .1, and overwrite the file. Lastly, to be able to compile for devices, we shall set the Flex 4.6 SDK to contain the new Air 3.2 SDK. So navigate to the SDK folder in the Flash Builder application directory and duplicate the 4.6.0 SDK folder. Now rename the duplicate SDK folder for convenience as 4.6.0 air3.2. Now merge the zip file you downloaded from labs.adobe.com with this new folder. Mac users keep in mind not to directly copy and paste over into this directory. On Windows it works well. On Mac it is recommended to get into each folder and replace the files and not directly the folders. I have already done all that and here is my folder. We just finished setting up the coding and testing environment for our project. It is time to set up the Starling framework itself. So visit starling-framework.org and click on the download link and download the zip file containing all the class files and packages for Starling framework. Now when building a game, it is often really handy to have a way to monitor the frame rate and the memory usage. For that, I recommend a nice little component, high res stats. You can download this from the below URL. We will be using this component in our project for monitoring the frame rate and memory usage by the game. All right, everything is set up and it's time for us to create a new project and initialize the Starling framework. Let's go ahead and create a new action script project. Give it a name, Starling project and choose web as the application type. We will use the default SDK for this project as we aren't yet compiling this to devices. When we actually choose to compile for devices, we'll need to choose the new SDK we merged with Air 3.2. Don't worry about that right now. I'll now navigate to the source path and add the Starling SDK source folder from my desktop. Don't forget to point to the SRC folder. I'll add another folder and choose the high res stats component source folder from my desktop. Click finish. The project is now created. We just need to set the Swift version in the compiler argument. So go to the project properties and navigate to action script compiler and set the parameter hyphen Swift hyphen version is equal to 13 and apply and save. Let's add a Swift metadata now by saying Swift frame rate is equal to 60, width is equal to 800, height is equal to 600, and background color is equal to 333333. Let's now add the stats component. So declare a private variable, private where stats of type stats and in the constructor stats is equal to new stats and this dot add child of stats. Finally, we come to initializing the Starling framework. So declare a private variable my Starling of type Starling and initialize it in the constructor. My Starling is equal to new Starling. The first parameter to the Starling constructor is a class that we'll create in a minute. We shall call it game. This will be a Starling display object and we shall pass the stage of the root Swift as the second parameter. Next, we'll define the anti-aliasing of the Starling framework. My Starling dot anti-aliasing 
is equal to 1. Feel free to play around with the anti-aliasing values. 0 refers to no anti-alias and 16 refers to the highest level of anti-alias. Just keep one thing in mind. The higher the values, the costlier it is on performance. However, for 2D games, I doubt if that value needs to go beyond 1. One thing you can note here is that the stats component is not part of Starlink code. It is rendered on the normal display list, not on stage 3D display list. While using stage 3D or Starlink, note that the usual display list objects which are not rendered using Starlink or stage 3D are always rendered above stage 3D layer. So in this case, stats always appears above the Starlink content that we will start developing going forward. The next thing we need to do is start the framework. My Starlink dot start before we proceed let us create the game class and extend it from sprite of course starling dot display dot sprite i'll click finish we'll add a new event listener this dot add event listener starling dot events dot event dot add it to stage and call the method on add it to stage now inside this method let us just trace a text starlink framework initialized let's save the project if we debug and run this project now you should see an error relating to W mode of the HTML wrapper. We'll need to edit the HTML template and add a new parameter to the embed code. So let's edit the HTML template in the text editor. Add a new parameter params dot W mode is equal to direct. Our objective right now is to make sure that there are no errors and it compiles well. So let's save and run the project. There you go. You should see the stats on top left of your stage area and the project here has compiled perfectly well. So guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your valuable comments or suggestions and watch out for the next episode where we shall explore the new game we will build and start coding on that. If you haven't already, subscribe to my tutorials page for more future updates. See you.